everyone my name is Rachel welcome or welcome back to my channel today I am here to bring you guys another trope recommendation video it seems like you guys have been really enjoying these kinds of videos from me so today I thought would be the perfect day to give recommendations for one of my absolute favorite romance tropes ever and that is the marriage in trouble trope for those of you that are not familiar with the marriage in trouble trope though I do think it's pretty self-explanatory it usually involves a married couple who have been together for years at the beginning of the novel something happens to their relationship that they are then on the brink of separation or divorce or something along those lines I do want to point out that in a lot of the books I'm going to recommend today usually the issues between the couple have to do with fertility or loss of a child or something along those lines and I do have a couple in here that have to do with cheating and I will bring that up when I bring those books up but for the most part it's usually something to do with a child um so I just wanted to point that out so that you guys can look up the content warnings for yourselves before diving into these books um but there's just something so beautiful and so hopeful about this trope for me. I just love seeing a couple that is on the brink of separation find their way back to one another. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into these recommendations. I have a mix of contemporary romances and historical ones. So the first one that I have to recommend is the very first Marriage and Trouble romance that I ever read, and that is The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. This is book one in The Bromance Book Club series, if you don't know the premise of this whole series centers around this group of guys in Nashville who come together to read romance novels to better understand their partners or better understand women in general. And so one of the things I adore about this series, of course, is the Bromance Book Club itself. But this first book, I think is still my personal favorite to this day. This one is about Gavin. He is a professional baseball player and his wife, Thea, they have been married for a few years. They, I do recall, they got married a little sooner than they would have liked because Thea got pregnant with their daughters. So the catalyst for this story is that Thea and Gavin, they've been doing okay in their marriage. It hasn't been anything amazing. He discovers that Thea has been been faking orgasms with him like their entire relationship or their entire marriage and so that sends him into a tailspin they get into a huge fight he pushes her away he ends up moving out of the house um and so then the bromance book club swoop in to save the day and um because he's friends with one of the guys in the club and so they recruit him but what's also really adorable about this series is that um for each book they pick a different like subgenre of a romance novel to read and so for this one they are reading a historical regency romance that is also a marriage in trouble because Gavin's marriage is in trouble and one of the things I just adore about this book is reading the excerpts from that historical romance and seeing how it applies to Gavin and his marriage. I need to reread this soon because it's been a couple of years since I've read it at this point. It's just so fun, so funny but there is a lot of depth to it as well because it is a marriage in trouble, you know, exploring Thea and Gavin relationship, how they got together in the first place, how they got to where they are today. Um, yeah, this is just fantastic. I can always talk about this series forever. <laughs> but the next one I'm going to recommend is another contemporary romance. This is Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. This is book two in her Hot and Hammered series. You can definitely read this as a standalone. So this one is about Rosie and Dominic. They were high school sweethearts. They got married pretty soon after high school from what I can recall. And the main problem with their marriage is that Dominic is just not a talkative guy at all. He like never talks to Rosie. Um, and I I feel like he's always been kind of a stoic guy but from what I can recall um, he is an ex-soldier so I think when he came back from his deployment he was even more distant with Rosie and I know that they have this thing in their relationship that they get together and have sex like once a week and Dominic thinks that that's like good enough for their relationship but Rosie is definitely not happy with that. I mean clearly they're not communicating and so one of the things I love about this romance is that they decide to go to this like relationship rehab. They go to like a marriage counselor and this guy is like a total hippie and there are scenes from this that I still vividly remember that make me laugh like when they're in therapy like there's this one session where he asks them 
about something that the other person does that always makes them happy and always makes them laugh. Um, and that scene is just so adorable. So this is, this is fantastic. Tessa Bailey also always brings it with the steam. This book is hot. Um, I really enjoy this whole series, but this one is my personal favorite. I gave it five stars though. I think I do have the unpopular opinion. I think a lot of people, um, have mixed feelings about this book, but I personally really, really loved it and highly recommend it. All right, let's throw a historical romance into the mix. So next we have Lord of Darkness by Elizabeth Hoyt. So this is book five in her her Maiden Lane series. I don't think that you necessarily need to read this series in order. However, I would recommend reading the couple of books that precede this one um, just to get some good context into the story. But basically we have Godric, who is one of the many people, I'll say, that is the ghost of St. Giles, this masked vigilante during the Georgian era. And then we have Margaret Redding, who they have been married for a few years at this point. It was definitely a marriage of convenience. And like the second they got married, they went on to live their separate lives. They had their reasons for getting married in the first place, but like they definitely don't live together. They definitely don't really have a relationship. But yeah, this is their story of how they become a married couple in every sense of the term. And I just adore this series because of the whole Ghost of St. Giles, like mass vigilante thing. It's absolutely, absolutely everything. Um, next, why don't we go back to a contemporary. This one is Ever After Always by Chloe Leese. This is book three in her Bergman Brothers series. This book in particular gives me so many vibes of the Bromance Book Club in the best way possible. So we have Aiden and Freya. They have been married for 12 years at this point. The catalyst for this story is that Aiden just has a lot of anxiety because he knows that Freya desperately wants to start having a family and he doesn't know how he can make that happen for her like financially and all of that so he's just very 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 anxious but he doesn't feel like he can confide in his wife and so eventually Freya just gets fed up and she kicks him out of the house um and so then Freya is one of the sisters of the Bergman brothers in the Bergman family um and so her brothers catch wind of what's going on and so one of the things I love about this is that um they actually all end up going on this family vacation um, most of the other family members have no idea of what's going on with Aiden and Freya, but some of the brothers do. And they recruit him into their own little bromance book club. And I just loved the discussions surrounding the romance genre. And this one also involves the couple going to marriage counseling. I really, really enjoyed those scenes. My only gripe with this book actually is that I wanted more scenes where they were going to their therapist or their counselor. This whole series is absolutely fantastic. Um, Chloe Lise always brings it with different kinds of representation, whether that be like neurodivergent characters or disabled characters, things like that. Yeah, this is just a really, really great series. Next up, we have another historical romance. This is probably, ooh, this is arguably my favorite of all of the books that I'm going to talk about. This is The Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson. This is going to be no surprise to you guys. If you've been following me for a while, you guys know how much I adore Nicola Davidson and how much I adore this novella in particular. But this is a series of three novellas that center around these three best friends who own a sex club together. And so this one centers around Grayson, who's kind of like this nerdy bookish guy. He runs the financials for the club. And then we have our heroine, Eliza. And so they had a whirlwind romance. Um, and something interesting about these two is that Eliza is definitely a dominant and Grayson is definitely a submissive. And so when they were courting before they got married, um, Grayson got a taste of how dominant Eliza can be and he fell even more in love with her because of that um, and vice versa. But then Eliza's mother gets into her head and tells her that she should be subservient to her husband in every way. And so she does change her behavior after they get married. Grayson kind of freaks out they start fighting a lot and they end up separating. They don't, they don't even live in the same house or anything. Um, and so they come back together because their friends are getting married and oh my God, this is so hot. Like Nicola Davidson always brings it with the steam. Like she is a master at writing erotic historical romances. So the steam is there. I adored this, you know, dominant submissive dynamic between Eliza and Grayson and just the romance is beautiful. I think this one even made me tear up. Like it's, it's 
absolutely fantastic. This is another one that I need to like shut myself up about because I will keep talking about it for hours if given the chance. Um, next up, Let's bring up some more historicals. I have The Raquel of Roth by Amelie Howard. This one is about Isabel and Winter. This is another one where the couple got married a few years before, um, but Winter, our hero, you know, he's just got a lot of issues, particularly daddy issues. Um, he has this idea in his head that his father did terrible things to his mother. Um, yeah, so he is just like not doing great and so he feels that he has like no capacity to really incorporate Isabel into his life and so as soon as they get married he just like puts her away in his country estate where his father lives um, and he goes back to London to live his life and so a few years pass Isabel is just fed up with this whole arrangement and so she decides to go to London herself and to confront Winter about it. And I will say this is one of those where the hero Winter like needs to get his head out of his ass. He's kind of an ass a lot of the time but Isabel's character is absolutely iconic and I just adore the way that she goes after what she wants. Like this was just a really 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 fun time. Next up let's keep it going with some historical romances. I have Lady Isabella's Scandalous Marriage by Jennifer Ashley. This is book two in her Mackenzie McBride series. The first part of this series centers around the four Mackenzie brothers and their romances. Um, and so I would definitely, definitely recommend reading book one before going into this one. That's The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie. That is a phenomenal historical romance, but I think I love this one even more. So this one is about Mac Mackenzie. He is just this hot Scottish artist. Um, and then we have Isabella, of course. And so they got married when Isabella was 18. This was her first season on the marriage mart when she was looking for a husband. They just had this whirlwind romance. They ran away together. And then after a few years of a very turbulent marriage, I don't know, they were just fighting a lot. I can't remember the specifics of what exactly went wrong in their marriage, but she actually ended up leaving Mac, which in this time period, this takes place in like the 1890s, I believe. Um, I mean, that was very scandalous for a wife to leave her husband. Um, and so since then, he has been pining after her. And um, through different circumstances, they find their way back into each other's lives. And one of the things I always have to point out when I talk about this book is that this is one of the hottest historical romances that I've read in a while. I read this pretty recently. It's not necessarily because there's just like a ton of steamy scenes. It's just that the sexual chemistry and tension between Mac and Isabella is scorching the entire time, even when they're not being intimate with each other. Like you can just feel it on the page. Next up we have another historical. This is Lord and Lady Spy by Shanna Galen. This one is so fun. We have Adrian and Sophia. They are both spies in like Regency London. This is definitely based off of the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And so I think they're both spies for the same organization, but they don't know that their spouse is also a spy. And so this is another romance where uh, their marriage has been turbulent because of like fertility issues and things like that. Um, but this one was just really fun because of the spy aspect. Like it just felt very unique. I need to find more historical romances with spies, but I just love that like both the hero and the heroine were spies and they were married and like, but it was just, it was really, really cool. I definitely need to read more from this author as well. I thought to mix things up, I would actually mention a couple of books that are part of the Ice Plane of Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. So these are sci-fi romances. The first one I'm gonna mention is Barbarian's Heart. Now this one is like book nine of the series and I, kind of would recommend reading the series in order. Like I hate being one of those people that like recommends a book that's later in a series, but like I, I feel like you really should read the series to get the full context, but I did want to bring these books up anyway. But yeah, this one is about a human woman and an alien man and they are mates. They've already had a kid together, but our hero suffers amnesia because of an accident. And so it's the two of them finding their way back to each other, seeing if the hero, I can't remember the names anymore, but I, you know, seeing if the hero can retrieve his memories, different things like that, lots of angst for sure. And then the other one is Barbarian's Hope. This one is between Asha and Himalo. They are both aliens. Um, and this is one where they were mated some years back. She ended up losing a child and um, through both of their grief, they ended up separating. Himalo left 
Asha. And so yeah, once again, it's about the two of them finding their way back to each other. I actually just read this one last night and I really, really enjoyed it. So now I'm going to get into some marriage in trouble books that either have to do with love triangles or cheating. So that's why I left them for last because they're definitely angstier. They're definitely more taboo because of the cheating. Usually cheating is a hard pass for me, but these books somehow make it work to where I still rooted for the main characters. So first one I'm going to mention is a historical romance that I read pretty recently. This is The Day of the Duchess by Sarah McLean. Now this is book three in her Scandal and Scoundrel series. I have not read the other books in the series. You can definitely read this as a standalone. This is about Serafina and Malcolm. They are the Duke and Duchess of Haven. And so their relationship has kind of always been turbulent because they had this like whirlwind romance. They ended up being caught like making out together. Um, and so that forced Malcolm to propose to Serafina, but he learned pretty soon after that um, because of Serafina's mother, uh, Serafina essentially trapped Malcolm into ruining her and proposing to her. And so yeah, their relationship has always been rocky. And then in this one, there is content warning for stillbirth. So lots of grief involved. Serafina ends up leaving Malcolm and goes to live in one of his country estates. And so the first scene of this book is really, really iconic though, um, because it's while Malcolm is in the House of Lords, he's in Parliament, and she just barges in there and demands a divorce from him, which is so, so, so scandalous. This takes place, I think, during the Regency era. And during this time period, uh, in order to get a divorce, Parliament had to approve it. It wasn't just up to one or both parties agreeing to it. Like, the government had to approve it, right? Um, and so, yeah, things go on from there. I will say I was very skeptical of their romance because Malcolm did cheat on Serafina. Um, and like I said, that's usually a really hard pass for me. But... Sarah McLean really made it work. I would suggest giving this one a chance if you've read other Marriage in Trouble stories and you want something with more angst. Um, this is also just a really beautiful story. Lots of longing and pain and love. Um, and by the end, I was convinced. I really was. I was convinced that Malcolm and Serafina belong together. And yeah, I think that this is a beautiful story. Also, we have a beautiful, beautiful step back. Um, next one that I'm going to recommend is another one that involves cheating, but I feel like this one is even more extreme when it comes to the cheating. This is Forget Me Not by QB Tyler. This is definitely a more taboo romance because of, like I said, the cheating. And so we have Bennett and Olivia. This one also has to do with amnesia because um, we see that they are on the brink of divorce to the point where I believe their divorce is going to be finalized in a month. But then Bennett gets into a really bad car accident and he suffers amnesia. So he doesn't remember anything from the last two years. And so in his mind, him and Olivia are happily married and in love, but Olivia, of course, knows the truth. And we do learn early on that Bennett cheated on Olivia quite a bit with a girlfriend that he had on the side, essentially. Um, there's a lot more going on with the story, but I just wanted to point that out so you're not shocked by the cheating, basically. Um, this is a book that I am still <laughs> very conflicted about to this day. I did give it five stars mainly because it's so like beautifully, beautifully written. I even put in my Goodreads review though, like is Bennett a piece of shit? I don't know. But at the same time, Olivia isn't perfect either. Like there's just a lot going on with both of their characters. So I think it's definitely a book that's gonna make you think and make you feel conflicted. And I feel like that's kind of a good thing with these kind of romances. Um, and so then, I have, let's see, I have two Marriage and Trouble stories that involve a love triangle and both of these, both of these do involve cheating. Yes. So first one I'm going to recommend is Heartbreak Warfare by Heather M. Ogeron and Kate Stewart. Yes, those are the two authors. Um, so this one is dark. It is very dark. Let me point that out because we have our two main characters that we meet. Um, we have Katie, who is already married to a man named Gavin. Um, and then we have a third main character, Chris. So Chris and Katie are serving together in the military in Afghanistan, I believe, somewhere in the Middle, Middle East. And um, they end up getting kidnapped together. 
and they go through some very brutal things. I also want to throw out there that there is a content warning for, sex for sexual assault. Um, Chris literally sees Katie get raped. It is very, very, very dark. And so through this experience, they inevitably become really, really close. Before they got kidnapped, they were already becoming close and kind of flirting with each other, but it was harmless. Um, but then this experience happens. And I mean, I can only imagine how that would bond you to the other person that you have been kidnapped with. Um, and so then they get out of that situation. They both end up coming home because of their injuries and different things like that. Um, and Gavin, who is Katie's husband, he also is involved in the military. I think he either is or was a captain, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, so they come back from this experience and they just can't help the feelings that they feel for each other. And it's definitely one of those stories where you have no idea who she is going to pick by the end. Like this book really, really leaves you guessing. Um, so it's very angsty, um, beautifully, beautifully written, very dark. So just know that. And then the last one I'm going to recommend is another love triangle involving a married couple. We have What He Doesn't Know. This is a series of three books by Candy Steiner. It's really a series of like two books that follow the love triangle. And then the third book is the romance of the guy that Charlie, our heroine, doesn't pick. Um, so that's a spoiler. So I'm not going to mention who that third book is about. But we do have Charlie. She has been married to this guy, Cameron, for quite a few years. This is another story that involves uh, loss of a child or fertility issues. I can't remember specifically which. Um, and so, yeah, they are not doing well in their marriage. And then we have Reese, who I believe was one of Charlie's best friends when they were growing up. I can't remember if they actually started a relationship when they were like teenagers or anything. Um, but they ended up separating, I believe, like when they both left their hometown uh, for college. And so Charlie's a school teacher and Reese ends up moving to their small town to also be a teacher at the same school that Charlie works at. And so things go on from there. This is another one that does involve cheating because Charlie is married. Um, yet another one where you have no clue who she's going to pick. Like Candy Steiner really, really keeps you on the edge of your seat. So that's going to be it for my marriage and trouble romance recommendations. I would love it if you guys would leave more recommendations down in the comments below, um, just for people that are watching this video so that they can get recommendations and that so I can get more recommendations because I always love discussing books with you guys in the comments. I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe and I thank you so much in advance if you do and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!